There's nothing quite as frustrating as a bad movie ending. Failure to stick that landing in the final act can totally ruin an otherwise great movie. Or give us one more reason to hate one that was already a dud. Here's a look at some of the most annoying movie endings in recent memory. And it should go without saying, but spoilers ahead. Matrix Revolutions The Matrix trilogy always tried to be more of a thinking person's action flick than your average kung fu kickfest. So it didn't exactly come as a surprise when the second and third installments took a deeper look at the complex ideas behind all the action. Still, it was pretty disappointing when the series was capped off by a confusing blur that went from hand-to-hand -hand combat directly into poorly explained Eastern mysticism. Look, look! Just look at that. When you end up needing fan sites and message boards to try and explain the ending of your trilogy, you've clearly done something wrong. X-Men The Last Stand For the third film in the successful X-Men franchise, screenwriters Simon Kimberg and Zach Penn tried to bring the force that consumed and killed Jean Grey, the Dark Phoenix, to the big screen. Unfortunately, budget and studio limitations prevented the filmmakers from adapting the comic story properly and fans were left with a lackluster version of the tale. The restrictions made the deaths of crucial characters virtually meaningless, and the movie's big emotional moment was completely undercut by a confusing post credit scene. Sure, the movie made money, but The Last Stand was so widely disliked that it sent the entire X-Men franchise into limbo for years. Signs There is no shortage of movies depicting hostile aliens invading our planet, but somehow it's a story that needs constant retelling. This is likely because it's been quite effective, and it seems that you've got to really go off the rails in order to screw it up. There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Sadly, that's just what M. Night Shyamalan did with Signs. The film is very well cast and, for the most part, tells an effective story. But unfortunately, all of that goes out the window when this alien thriller revealed that the alien's one big weakness is friendship and cuddles. I'm just kidding. It was actually just water. Earth is over 70% water, so isn't it a little strange that an alien species advanced enough to travel across the galaxy and try to take over a planet would pick a destination covered mostly by a substance that can destroy them? Perhaps Shyamalan will one day reveal that the real twist of science was that the aliens were on a self-destructive intergalactic mission. That would make a lot more sense. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 What do you get when you try to depict one of the most emotional moments in a comic book character's history while also setting up a slew of studio-mandated spin-offs? If you guess the cancellation of the third movie in the trilogy, you're right! The last act of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a mess, as it tried to squeeze in killing off Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy right before rushing into a climax that dealt with the twin dangers of Electro and the Green Goblin. As if that wasn't enough, the movie also tried to fit in a tease for Sony's then planned Sinister Six standalone feature. Like a lot of subpar superhero movies, it all ended up being a lot of noise with not much emotional impact, and the negative reaction killed the franchise and sent the quippy web-slinger swinging right back into Marvel's welcoming arms. Now you see me. There's nothing quite as frustrating as a dumb movie that thinks it's smart, and Now You See Me is a perfect example of a confident idiot. I am too smart! I am too smart! SMRT! I mean S-M-A-R-R-T! Films that rely heavily on sleight of hand and double crossing are a lot of fun, but while they're busy with their tricks, they often forget to tell an actual story. And that's exactly what happened here. It's all for show, correct? The final act, in which Mark Ruffalo's FBI agent character reveals himself to be the shadowy figure behind a secret order of magicians, is as absurd as it is boring. The most infuriating part of all is that the movie has a fantastic cast behind it, and it's hard not to imagine the angry people sitting in the theater feeling like the movie had played a trick on them. I Am Legend they say the third time's a charm, but that sadly proved not to be the case for Richard Matheson's classic novella, I Am Legend. After a pair of poorly made adaptations, Hollywood had a chance to finally get it right with I Am Legend in 2007. Unfortunately, even after more than 40 years, Matheson's tale of a scientist living as the last man on Earth still turned out to be too dark for studio execs. The biggest problem? The movie's third act, in which the main character comes to understand that instead of being humanity's final hope, he's actually a monster in the eyes of the planet's new civilization. Let me save you! Let me save you! 
after test screening audiences rejected the original ending, you know, the one that was in the actual book it was based on, director Francis Lawrence had to reshoot it, thus turning a potentially thought-provoking picture into just another forgettable CGI editor's demo reel. Man of Steel Some people hate it, some people love it, but regardless of where you stand, there's no denying that Man of Steel has one of the most hotly debated movie endings in recent memory. Some fans were on board with director Zack Snyder's over-the-top climactic battle, which ends with Superman snapping General Zod's neck. But many moviegoers who grew up with Superman felt that his decision to execute the movie's villain was unnecessary, and even downright offensive. Man of Steel's ending also received serious backlash for the amount of destruction and and death it brought flying through the core of Metropolis. The giant box office numbers might suggest that fans love this movie, but just about any film about Superman is going to make money, so maybe that's not the best measuring stick. Although it wasn't as critically panned as Batman vs Superman, Hello darkness, my old friend. Man of Steel definitely presented an ending that had many fans up in arms. Lord of the Rings – The Return of the King Generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with the way the Lord of the Rings saga concludes. Frodo completes his quest, the ring gets all melted, and everyone lives happily ever after. Yet, it seemed like director Peter Jackson really didn't want the movie to end, as the conclusion seems to drag on and on before finally cutting to the end credits. When you look at the series of scenes that slowly plays out over the last act of The Return of the King, it seems like the movie just doesn't want to, like, go away. And just when you think the movie is finally over, you find yourself sitting through yet another leisurely look at life after the fall of Sauron. Instead of feeling satisfied at the end of a story well told, lots of fans found themselves getting bored while a bunch of hobbits jumped around on a bed in slow motion. Damn those slow motion hobbits. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.